A continuación, por favor, Dr. Henry. Now, Dr. Henry Cohen with adults. Thank you, dear Vera. Hello, everybody. Well, you will see that my presentation will be very easy because he gave the equivalent will be like two parallel presentations. For the following 13 minutes, we will have the reference for diarrhea, for antibiotic-associated diarrhea, and then we will continue with travelers' diarrhea, and then Helicobacter pylori and the Saccharomyces boulardii with a final summary. But I would like to give you some expectations. We have last minute data and we will dedicate a minute with this data. What happens to antibiotic associated diarrhea? They constitute 7% of adverse effects to drugs, so this is very frequent. And there are different drugs that are like at least 700, and the most frequent is antibiotic related diarrhea. And most of these antibiotics are the ones that we use to wide spectrum like drugs, like section, but also chemotherapies and the acids and other inhibitors. This slide was mentioned by our previous speaker. And I even made a question regarding children, but this is not the same thing. Like antibiotic associated to antibiotics could represent up to 17.5% in adults. Now, what are the consequences from AAD? First of all, the antibiotic that was supplied for any reason should be stopped so the original disease would be even more serious then there is an increase of resistance to antibiotics in the population where the people lives. Many times the patient will need to take antidiuretic medication to improve the situation. There is an increase of hospitalization and the higher risk of CDAD. And for all of us, it represents higher cost. Now, let's see what is the role of Saccharomyces boulardii in the prevention of AAD. This is a role from this rubbish group in Seattle that is a prospective double-blinded placebo-controlled study in 180 hospitalized patients treated with antibiotics. Saccharomyces boulardii C and CMI 745 was initiated within 48 hours of antibiotic treatment, and then it continued for two weeks after the last dose. It produced a decrease in occurrence of diarrhea of 57% and 70% when we are only analyzing the patients that had the Clostridium difficile. What happens when we are using B lactam antibiotics? It belongs to the same group, but the first, otherwise, McFarland. It is a parallel double blind randomized placebo controlled study with Saccharomyces boulardii initiated within 72 hours of antibiotic treatment and continued for up to three days after the end of the last dose. And here we also see a decrease of occurrence of diarrhea. Of 51% for Saccharomyces boulardii when it is compared with the placebo group. This is a meta-analysis, a more recent meta-analysis from Sayevska, where we see that almost all works favor the use of Saccharomyces boulardii to prevent AAD with an overall related risk of 0.4. Standing the information of this meta-analysis, we can see that the treatment with Saccharomyces boulardii compared with placebo reduced the risk of 
antibiotic associated diarrhea of 17.226.7% with relative risk of 0.43. The necessary number to prevent a case of antibiotic associated diarrhea by its of 10. And Sacro Mrs. Boulardi in this meta analysis showed a very good safety profile. McFarland, working with this topic with his group, he published in the American Journal of Gastroenterology in 2006 eight clinical trials in adults with more than 1,500 patients. 100,000 patients were treated with Saccharomyces boulardii. They were using Saccharomyces boulardii in combination with antibiotics in high-risk groups. These high-risk situations were related to the condition of the patient or with the antibiotic that was going to be administered, and they saw a reduction on the occurrence of diarrhea. So, in order to summarize this small chapter, what are the consequences, practical consequences of AAD and the use of Saccharomyces boulardii? In general, we can have up to a 60% risk reduction with also another risk of stopping antibiotic, a reduction in duration of ATB therapy, another reduction of risk of resistance and secondary effects in cost, and an increase in compliance of antibiotic treatment and an increase in recovery of these patients. So, in two words, using this strategy, we are decreasing costs and we are improving recovery. The second topic that we were going to talk about was the situation of Clostridium difficile. This is another work of McFarland in 1994. This is a parallel, double-blinded, randomized study in adults with Saccharomyces boulardii, one gram per day, plus antibiotic for four weeks. And we see that remission of diarrhea decreases in 41% compared to placebo. This is another work that's the same work, sorry, using the same dosage gram gram in combination with antibiotic for four weeks, but we were analyzing remission of diarrhea in patients that already have a Clostrum difficile associated diarrhea and the remission of Saccharomyces boulardii compared to placebo produces a risk reduction of 47%. In the work of the same group in 2006, they present a work with the following objective of comparing efficacy of probiotics to prevent antibiotic associated diarrhea and management of Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea, but they have 180 studies with more than 300,000 patients. In 25 randomized clinical trials, probiotics reduced relative risks for antibiotic associated diarrhea. And for six randomized clinical trials, probiotics showed significant efficacy in reducing Clostridium associated diarrhea. So, if we're analyzing this data, a new work from the same group, three cl randomized clinical trials in adults with 300 patients, and from these 300 patients, more than half of them were treated with Saccharomyces boulardii. Saccharomyces boulardii, in combination with antibiotics, prevents recurrence of infection by Clostridium, and it also decreases recurrence of Clostridium difficile in 40 to 70% of the cases in adult patients. Now let's analyze traveler's diarrhea. As you know, the most frequent disease is trouble with calf. It's from 20 to 50 percent of international travelers every year, which represents almost 10 million people, and it's the highest morbidity cause in people traveling from developing countries from developed countries to developing countries. Now, this is a very interesting meta-analysis from different cases, but if we see work from Coleridge are very important. And almost all works favor the use of probiotics with relative risk of 185, and also 
with two randomized clinical trials, we didn't have important secondary effects by using probiotics in these patients. Now, with the situation of Helicobacter pylori, as you know, this is a gram-negative bacteria affecting more than 50% of global population, and more than 80% of infected people are asymptomatic, but it could produce chronic low-grade gastric mucus inflammation. It's responsible for 10 to 20 percent of these patients that will develop throughout their life a duodenal or gastric ulcer. But we also need to remember that the presence of Helicobacter increases the risk of gastric cancer in two to six times and a lower risk, the possibility of having malt lymphoma. So here we have a meta-analysis analyzing the effect of Saccharomyces boulardii in the eradication of Helicobacter pylori, five randomized clinical trials, 1,300 patients published by Sayevska in 2010. They were using Saccharomyces boulardii plus triple plan and here we have an overall relative risk that is decreasing, favoring the use of probiotics. This is the same word, but instead of analyzing eradication rate, here we are analyzing the frequency of adverse events, and we see these have a relative, an overall relative risk of 6% of the adverse effect that is risked by using probiotics with triple plan for helicobacter is diarrhea and this meta-analysis. But this is very interesting. Sayevska and her group published this meta-analysis in 2010, and recently the same authors published this same work where they are including in this meta-analysis 11 randomized clinical trials, 2,200 patients, most of them adults. This is what Ivan showed, 330 were children. From 853 patients from the Saccharomyces boulardii group, they eradicated almost 80%, while on the control group, they only eradicated 608 out of 855 patients, which means 71%. Saccharomyces boulardii compared to the control group showed a lower risk of adverse effects. Oh, overall adverse effects with a relative risk of 144, particularly diarrhea, but different from the meta-analysis in 2010. We also have a significant risk reduction in nausea in this meta-analysis. Now, conclusions for this work from Sayez Cap's group that in study populations, the efficacy of the eradicating treatment is not enough because it's below 80 percent. But the addition of Saccharomyces boulardii significantly increased the rate of eradication, but it's still under the desired rates as physicians treating patients. We need to remember this. We still need to do more, even though the results are improving on eradicating by, the, by using Saccharomyces boulardii, we haven't solved the complete eradication of Helicobacter pylori with any of the plants that we have available, and we still need to work on that. The use of Saccharomyces boulardii, as I just uh, concludes, significant, significantly reduces the occurrence of adverse drug reactions. And we promise a final summary where we think that after having this good evidence, we can say that there is good evidence on the efficacy and safety of Saccharomyces boulardii C and CMI 745 as a therapeutic probiotic in adults in different situations, including antibiotic associated diarrhea, C. difficile associated diarrhea and traveler's diarrhea, but also there is evidence to support the use of Saccharomyces boulardii in combination with the treatment against Helicobacter pylori to eradicate it and reduce adverse events. And I promise you that I was going to give you last minute data for a meta-analysis. We've been talking all day long of relative risk, cross-ratio, meta-analysis, evidence. And we have talked a lot about a topic where no meta-analysis was presented, that is, 
the America Cup. And I want you to know that it, this morning we had evidence, but we need to be honest. Evidence is that Uruguay is the current champion of America. But Dr. Busto said that what we're asking today, and we ask it again, we have a different answer. So Sunday, the answer will not be updated. But there are other things that will be updated. And I will show you the evidence. In the history of the America Cup, Uruguay has won it 15 times, and it has 3 million inhabitants. Argentina, who has won it 14 times, has 45 million inhabitants. Brazil won it eight times, and it has 200 million inhabitants. And the rest, with all due respect, has won it with a small amount, Paraguay 2, Peru 2, Colombia 1, and Chile 0. There are the ones that still have the chance to win this trophy. So you can see if you analyze this evidence and you adapt it to the population, if for any situation, any country wins all cups for the future in a continuous way, in order to get the amount of cups Uruguay has per capita, Argentina will get it in 2,800 and Brazil in almost in the year 6,000. Thank you very much.